They don't say on their website. Yeah. Now, let's say that, that, that if somebody settles there and, and builds a you know eco-friendly house and spends 10, 15, 20 years you know, building it and for whatever reason decides to move on, mm -hmm. is that is that technically their property? They can quote unquote sell it or is it you, you let somebody else take it? Is it kind of how is that seen when you make the commitment to stay there? I'll go ahead and talk about how that's gonna work. So when we to make sure the land is is not ever taken away from everyone, it'll be held in a land trust by a person because a, a a fictitious organization like a nonprofit corporation or something like that can't have land patented, which is the only true title. It's it's never a land patent has never lost in court. Like nobody's been able to take land from someone, not for taxes or you know, not even state governments, not for any reason. They've never been able to take land from somebody who had it patented. And since a fictitious organization like a corporation can't own can't have a land patent, they don't have to be under a in a land trust where the trustee is a natural person. And in a land trust, how it works is that person is a trustee for all these other people having land. And for people to to be able to have this land, they just have an agreement that they'll never, you know, sell their land or go to strip club. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, I mean, they, they could put something with, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. 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 which is why the agreement's in place. We'll have all these agreements. Yeah, there's agreements that make sure it's in, it stays in harmony with nature and people's neighbors. But that's to answer to answer your question, it's it can't be sold. It's passed down to your children, to your, your family. You can, yeah. another family member, whoever yeah. you choose to give it to, can have it. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So if you move, you can give it to whoever and if you choose your at that point. Or you can actually sell it at that point, or no, you can't, no. can't sell. sell. You don't even it's have to live there, really, you, right? You, you just didn't buy it, cultivate so. it. Yeah, exactly. You have it, but you don't even have to do that. And, yeah, that's a good point because yeah. some people are still going to be maybe yeah. working in the city, coming out there on weekends or whatever. So as long as it's being cultivated, then that's the only you know that's the only requirement like that. And what about dwelling requirements? International codes. Well, I mean, like, well, uh, read, read the. I'm still encourage everybody to read as much as they're interested in on the Colorado they made. That will that will answer so many of your questions. Right. Those kinds of details, which are really for our group, it's not the time to really. Specifically focus on those, but there's there's a lot of information on that. Yeah, there is, and you can, get, you can go to deep. It says what kind of homes they built and what kind of homes. Yeah. Their goal is to be fully self-sustaining um, uh, in how many years? Three years, I think they said. Yeah. Completely where where yeah. no there's no outside. The, they're basically they're not on the city grid of, right. of, and city water and city electricity and stuff like that. Fully wow. being solar fully panels, water catchment, whatever springs, wells, whatever. <coughs> Whatever that means, wind power. There's a new concern. There's a bill called S787. It's the EP. It's a Clean Water Act. Where the government can take, you know, can annex or, or get in the domain over, over any land that has an aquifer underneath it, or any kind of puddle or stream or creek. And um, yeah, I'm like, you know, that's, that's something to worry about. Eminent domain only applies to people who don't have a land patent. But the EPA can just you got to go on ground. Tell that to Jerry Jones in the new Cowboy Stadium. <laughs> you were right. I, yeah. I think that your point is well taken. If you really understand, if you just give a little insight about jurisdiction, there is a fiction. If you understand the legal history of this fiction, it's like we live on top of a piece of glass because we choose to do that. The simple history is that we live in the state of Texas or the state of Illinois, or the state of Virginia. All those aren't the real land, our feet aren't on the ground. They're corporations or subsidiary corporations. And you can look it up the United States Code, there's three definitions of what the United States is. So that going into a long <laughs> history, yeah. Yeah. if you choose by contract, and it's, you know, it goes back to birth certificates, marriage license, and all those things yeah. that you choose to be chattel or property of a corporation. If you look up the United States Code and what a person is, it isn't a human being, mm -hmm. sentient, who's sovereign and is aware of their surroundings. 
And so you go back to our history, even of this country, and to be politically correct, they kind of wipe out all of, make it all bad. And certainly there was some bad, but there's a lot of good. And you go into the issue of the formation of townships, people, only human beings could, that own land could vote. Well, these were people who had their feet on the ground, and they were, they had true land, and it was the Lodio title brought forth from land patents. And you look at the history, the first mortgages was a tax on the mortgage companies for providing the mortgage. The property owner never paid the tax. And the mortgage companies could never foreclose on sovereign's land. And so these are some little match words that I hear, the same concept. When we think of eminent domain, you know, if you live in Washington, D.C., which is that 10 square miles in Puerto Rico, Guam, the Virgin Islands, yes, you need to follow their contract. And you need to give up your piece of glass to have your little eminent domain to take place. Now the truth is, is that if you really want to travel, you do have a right to travel, you can require that they remove that easement, the cement off of that we drive on every time you come through, if you really want to give your rights, or you can allow them to just let you drive in one of their little loads of conveyance and mm -hmm. give them a little piece of license, the permission to do with that which is otherwise illegal. Now I'm pumping a lot at you real quick, but what they're talking about is not in this fictitious world we're living in, they're talking about getting on the ground and being connected again. And so we have, we have to shift, we've been brought up to believe that we live in this system, this matrix, and that, that's the only existence. So you gotta clean that slate and think about, okay, wait a minute, you know, I'm part of this, and I am creating, and part of what reality really is. It isn't all these codes and fictions, those are all statutory, they have nothing to do with what is lawful. Lawful deals with, okay, I'm, I do what I say I'm going to do and I don't harm others. And no government has the right to breach a contract. And so what are our agreements? And the government serves us. We are not the children of the government. No. <laughs> well, we own land in two countries. And both lots of land are in trustees. Okay? And one of them is his family's land. And it can't be sold outside of anyone outside of the clan. Like, you can sell it, but it has to be to someone that's a Laurel. Like, mm -hmm. the land is named Laurel. And your name has to be trust, Laurel, and you have to trade inside with each other. You know what I'm saying? It's, I mean, how many families live there? Probably 300, 400 families? It's like 2,500 hectares in the Philippines. And then we have four acres south of Dallas that isn't a trustee. It's a revocable trustee, but his aunt is a land attorney and all this, and. I mean, that's what we look at, but I, my idea is just keep going forward. Just keep moving forward and don't, don't worry about the eminent domain that will come later. <laughs> you know, if, hopefully, hopefully the whole Ron Paul everything takes off and everyone becomes <laughs> conscious and aware about what Washington, D.C. is really trying to do to this glass that we're living on. But, I mean, the point is that you should... Be aware that these things are possible to happen, but keep positive and optimistic that you keep moving forward and owning land is the only real way to be sovereign. I mean, it really is. Well, but the, you have to define what does it mean to own land. We're truly our steward.